Hey there guys, so uh, I switched on off access guider and I'll quickly run you through how I set it up and uh, share my first thoughts on it. <laughs> Okay, so I won't talk much about uh, what an off-axis guider is because uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, all of you already know what it is but a very basic explanation there's a small mirror inside of this which reflects uh, some of the light uh, passing through your telescope and uh, reflects it uh, up to the, uh, to the guiding camera and there are two main benefits of uh, using an off-axis guider and uh, the first one I would say that uh, because you uh, eliminate the differential flexure and if you want to know in a bit more detail uh, what the differential flexure is uh, I will post a link to a site uh, in the description but uh, the very short uh, version is that, that during a long exposure your guide scope can move uh, a tiny bit or the mirror if you are using a reflector and that usually results into elongated stars now I had uh, quite some problems lately with this uh, because uh, of the way I had my guide scope attached so I 3D printed myself this holder and then the guide scope should go on top here like this and this worked uh, quite well but uh, lately we have some huge um, temperature swings and uh, all of that is starting to be an issue so the night started with uh, let's say one or two degrees so the night started with uh, one or two degrees uh, celsius but uh, during the night it dropped to minus uh, five or eight degrees so the material starts to bend uh, and flex especially the PLA plastic and because of that like I mentioned I got uh, elongated stars and I'll probably pull up uh, an image but you can definitely do a better job uh, attaching the guide scope than I had but I also wanted to lose some weight on my setup and uh, that's the second benefit of an off-axis guider because you don't have a need to put on uh, a second scope it's just this small piece with the mirror inside so the obvious solution for me was to get uh, an off-axis guider I also watched a few videos which I will include uh, in the description below but from top of my head I think that uh, Astro Addict has a very similar guide scope like this and uh, I think I watched James Lamp yeah I think that I watched uh, a few videos from him but okay so I got this guide scope because where did I put because uh, it comes with a few uh, extensions which you will definitely need plus oops, I also got a one and a quarter inch uh, 0.5 uh, focal reducer so this way I increase uh, the field of view of the guiding camera a bit and here I had to do some manual changes so first I thought that I could just attach the, the reducer to the nose piece like this but uh, this way I couldn't get my guiding camera to focus without it there wasn't an issue but with the reducer attached uh, the focus uh, shifted uh, way too much inside so I just took the nose piece and I cut it uh, somewhere in the middle and then I attached the reducer like this and now I have no problems getting the guiding camera and the DSLR into focus and here I would really recommend you to do your basic focusing uh, during the day because uh, it is a bit tedious uh, getting uh, both the, the guiding camera and your DSLR uh, to focus at the same point and the next problem that I had is uh, where to put my filters and you really don't want to put the filters in front of the guide scope especially the H alpha filter because you won't be able to pick up uh, any stars in the guiding camera you have to remember that only a small portion of the light gets reflected and this is one of the downsides of an off-axis guider uh, picking up uh, usable stars but uh, back to the filters so I just cut another nose piece and this way you can screen the filter from the back side like this then just take the camera and while this is attached to the telescope you just put it back in and again if I want to switch the filter I just uh, detach the camera screw, screw this outside and switch the filter oh and this is something that I have to mention so if I'm switching between the filters I uh, always have to adjust uh, the focus so that means uh, that I have to refocus my guiding camera too which can be a bit of pain in the ass but uh, but I've been using it for the past few days now and uh, I got quite used to it plus uh, you can always adjust uh, the micro focus with those two screws 
So we have some play here and that's uh, more than enough play to get uh, the guiding camera back in focus. And another thing to mention, so like I said the past few days uh, I've been slewing around to quite a few uh, different objects and uh, I never had uh, problems uh, picking up uh, stars for guiding. So I went back to image the California Nebula and my current project which is the Jellyfish Nebula. Uh, I think that I also imaged the M106 galaxy and a couple of few uh, different targets and uh, like I said I didn't have uh, problems uh, getting uh, guiding stars. And uh, probably the last thing that I would like to warn you about is that uh, you can adjust the tilt of the mirror here. So I had my mirror tilted uh, way too low which means that uh, the vignetting of the telescope uh, affected uh, the guiding camera quite a lot. So I wasn't able to get uh, any stars for guiding. But yeah just be careful when you are setting up uh, that you tilt the mirror to the brightest spot uh, you can see on your image. Okay so I hope I covered enough for you to get uh, to get a basic overview but uh, if you have any questions please uh, just let me know and i would like to thank you for watching and see you again next time take care bye